which suggests a very important piece of physics. The horizontal motion of the car, which we would refer to as the horizontal, the horizontal velocity, is independent of the vertical velocity. Each goes its own way without interference by the other. Now, here is an experiment that I wish to talk about but will not show you, and I suggest you try to make the apparatus yourself. I call it the monkey and hunter. Here it is. Let us take a tube, say, of lucite, such as I have here, and let us bore sight on a monkey here. That's why I call it a monkey and hunter. Now, what is the monkey going to be? The monkey is going to be a tin can held up by an electromagnet. Now, what am I going to do? I'm going to put a light, say, a lucite ball in this place here in the chamber of the gun, and I'm going to have two little wires across the end of this tube, such as I have right here. If you look carefully, I'll take that stopper out. Now, what happens? When these two wires are crossed, the electromagnetic circuit is closed and the tin can is held up. Now I put my mouth to this end, in this fashion, and I blow. Now you know what happens. The projectile emerges here. As it emerges, it opens the two little wires. The electromagnet loses its magnetic hold and the monkey falls down. There's the monkey. Now let's say the monkey falls there in a certain time. And what do we expect? We ex expect the projectile to hit him. And here is a very important detail. The monkey can never be hit at that place if he stays there. Why? Because the moment the projectile emerges, it is taken down by gravitational forces and can never hit the monkey. That is to say, looking at it in another view, that if we had a gun aimed absolutely horizontally, absolutely horizontally, at a target on the nose, and we fired the gun absolutely horizontally, and the projectile emerged there, we could never hit the bullseye. Never. Why? Because the instant the projectile emerges, it is taken down like that. And, as an illustration of numbers, supposing the muscle velocity of the gun was a thousand feet per second. A thousand feet per second. Supposing this was a thousand feet. And supposing, under ideal conditions, the horizontal velocity of the projectile remains unaltered. It would take one second for the projectile to reach the target. But in one second, how far do, do gravitational forces take the projectile? As we discovered, 16 feet. Now somebody says, look here, Professor, I shoot guns and I hit targets. Of course you do, because what is really done is this. The sight on the gun is such as to compensate for this fall due to gravitational forces, and so the projectile is hit. So, remember, it is Newton and Galileo, very important, very important in the case of falling bodies and projectile motion. Now, here is another experiment that you can do. Did we not say that when a body falls from rest, it falls successively farther? And the distance is 16 feet, 48 feet, 80 feet, and so on. I have here another experiment that you can do. And we need to take a look at an apparatus which you can make at home. It consists of a string to which are attached some spheres, and I have used billiard balls. And now, since this is pretty high, I will show you that at the bottom, the separation is closer and farther apart as we get higher. So the picture I have drawn on the blackboard is turned upside down. Now, supposing we release the whole string of things from the very top, would not the success Excessive impacts of these balls on the ground be in arithmetic progression. Every second, let us say, one would hit, or every certain part of a second. But the distances are clearly in.
in geometric proportion, as you see from what I have done on the blackboard. Very exciting adventures. And I must say again, this business of one, three, five, uncovered by Galileo, and remember, this distance is 16 feet in the first second, in the first two seconds, 64 feet, in the first three seconds, 144 feet, and I wish to point out again, because this is enchanting to follow, this number, if we divide by 16 is 1, if we divide by 16 is 4, if we divide by 16 is 9, and you see 1 is 1 squared, and 4 is 2 squared, and 9 is 3 squared. So to quote Galileo, the distance is passed over by a falling body, beginning at zero time, are in the ratio of the odd numbers beginning with 1, 1, 3, 5. But the total distances passed over, 16, 64, 144, are in the ratio of the integers beginning with 1 squared. 1 squared, 2 squared, 3 squared, and so the next must be, of course, 4 squared, and so on. And since I have spoken about Galileo, we should take a look at this wondrous gentleman of Florence and Pisa and Rome and Padua. And here is Galileo, 1564, 1642. And I thank you for attending to our business.